Hi, everybody. Jay Privman, the National Correspondent with Daily Racing Forum, joined by Mike Watchmaker. He's the National Handicapper with Daily Racing Forum. And Mike, let's handicap a couple of races coming up this week that will impact our Derby Watch Top 20, beginning with the Florida Derby. There have been a couple big races in Florida this year leading up to this race, and four horses that are on our Derby Watch Top 20 are in here. Let's start with Audible who won the Holy Bull a couple of months ago and hasn't been seen since. What are your expectations for Audible in the Florida Derby? Well, I was all set to uh, bet and pick against Audible in the Florida Derby only because uh, I thought the field that he beat in the uh, Holy Bull was hungry. Uh, you know, the, the, the second horse uh, was Free Drop Billy, and he came back to be dismal in the Gotham Stakes. He finished third, but was not a good third. Uh, and, you know, I just thought that Audible was a horse who was all dressed up and ready to be tipped over. But, you know, it looks like, and I, I still might pick against him, but it, it it looks like he's going to get a good setup because the draw is different this time around. we got Strike Power, who we're going to discuss, breaking from the inside. And I think the pace situation is going to be different than it was in the Fountain of Utah, much more like what Audible encountered in the Holy Bowl. And maybe he's going to get a setup just like he got in the Holy Bowl. And uh, uh, so, I mean, he's going to be he's going to be the favorite in the race. He deserves to be the favorite in the race. And he's uh, he might take some beating. Well, the Fountain of Youth, as you alluded to, was the most recent prep race in Florida, leading to the Florida Derby. Promises fulfilled. And as you mentioned, strike power uh, ran one, two in that race. And they pretty much ran one, two all the way around the racetrack. What did you think of their performances that day? And let's discuss further, as you were just alluding to, how you expect the pace to maybe be different this time. Well, uh, you know, Strike Power let Promises Fulfilled go early in this race. We'd be remiss not to not to note that Good Magic, the champion two-year-old, was was a, a, a solidly beaten third in that race. Um, you know, I, Strike Power let Promises Fulfilled go early. Um, and that's a big reason why they went around the racetrack one, two, and now strike power drew the rail. And I just, I, I just can't see him letting promises fulfilled, get away with another unmolested early lead because it didn't work last time. And he's got the rail and it's a short run to the first turn. And, and I think he's going to make use of it. So I do think the pace situation is going to be different this time. And I think we're going to learn a lot more about uh, strike power and promises filled in this race because I think they're going to have to be used early this time. Yeah, strike power to me, Mike, uh, is a very courageous horse, but I think we're getting to distances that are really going to test his ability to last uh, that long. Promises fulfilled, I think maybe we've overlooked a little bit here. He's only lost once and he had a legitimate excuse coming out of that race. He had a splint injury, he came back and ran a very good race, I thought, in the Fountain of Youth. And I think he's going to be a formidable formidable opponent again on Saturday. But the other horse here who I'm really intrigued by is Catholic Boy. I've liked this horse a lot, but I was disappointed with his one and only start so far this year at Tampa in the Sam Davis stakes. I'm hoping and expecting a better performance from him, and he's obviously going to need it. What are you expecting to see from Catholic Boy? Well, I think that you've liked him a lot more than I have all winter, Jay, basically. Um, you know, I just didn't care for Catholic Boy's second place finish in, in the Sam Davis in his first start this year. He, he got beat by Flame Away, who was made a late nominee to the Triple Crown, but he wasn't even a first stage nominee to the Triple Crown. And, you know, he had the length of the stretch to get by Flame Away, and he just couldn't do it. And, you know, Catholic Boy did win the Rems in last fall at Aqueduct. Uh, I don't think that race has necessarily aged very well. Uh, Avery Island, who finished second in that race, did come back to win over the winner at Aqueduct, but it wasn't a great performance. And he's injured and off the Triple Crown Trail. But, you know, nobody's really come out of the, the Remsen to, to, to distinguish themselves. So, uh, you know, I think Catholic Boy, he might get a, a good pace set up. But then again, we're talking about Gulfstream Park and a big race day. And, I, you know, I don't know that it's necessarily a surface that's, conducive to deep closers like Catholic Boy. Uh, he's a closer, and I, I don't know that he's going to— the pace might set up for him, but the racetrack might not be in his favor. Well, that's our look at the Florida Derby, but uh, halfway around the world on Saturday is the UAE Derby, and far more interest, Mike, I think, in this race this year than in years past. There's an American horse that's gone over named Rerai, but— Two horses on our Derby Watch Top 20 that are based in Europe looking to move on to the Kentucky Derby, beginning with Mendelssohn, who we saw over here last fall when he won the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf. 
He comes off a win on synthetic last time. What do you expect to see from Mendelssohn on Saturday night in the UAE Derby? Well, it's going to be a very revealing outing for Mendelssohn, Jay, because it's going to be his first race on dirt. And he's absolutely bred to handle it. He's by Scat Daddy, and Scat Daddy's run on everything. Uh, Scat Daddy is also the sire of Justify, who we, who we both highly regard. And he's uh, he was a gazillion dollar yearling purchase because uh, he's a, a half to a beholder who only you were the underbidder, years. right? Pardon me. You were the was, underbidder. Right? I was the underbidder at twenty seven dollars, but um, I would have liked to have gotten him. But uh, you know, I mean, he's he's bred to, to absolutely love the dirt, um, and he's a high class racehorse. But he's the one that you're going to mention next is I think could be a formidable opponent for him. Right, and that's Goldtown, who will be uh, running in the UAE Derby after winning the prep for that race. That being the UAE two thousand guineas. Mike, I thought this horse's race last time was dynamic. I, he yes. blew that field away, and I think he might be the one to beat on Saturday. I'm in complete agreement, Jay. You know, I don't know what was behind him in that race, but this was one of the rare instances for me that that, that doesn't matter because he was so impressive visually. I mean, I, you know, his jockey just pressed the button on him, and he exploded away from that field. Uh, and I think he's immensely talented. He's now two for two, so switching to dirt. Uh, and he, uh, he 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 might be a, a stone cold freak. Well, two real interesting races this week on the road to the Kentucky Derby. Both of these races offering a hundred points for first, forty for second, twenty for third, and ten for fourth. Mike and I will be back next week to recap those races. Also here on DRF.com, you can currently find a preview of, or excuse me, a recap of last week's big races, including the Louisiana Derby and the Sunland Derby. For Mike Watchmaker, I'm Jay Privman. Thanks for watching.